Hi everyone, my name's Kyle and I am the owner of Velo Mobile Shop. For the past three years, I've been making parts and upgrades for various types of electric bicycles. Now I decided to take all of that knowledge and the things that I've learned over the past few years and start building my own bikes. And then I decided to take it a step further and teach you how to build your own electric bike. So for the past couple of months, I've been going through footage and actually filmed the entire process start to finish from a bare frame to a completed 750 watt hub motor driven fat bike. And initially I was going to charge $99 or somewhere thereabouts for this course and the material because there was a lot of work that went into it and a lot of effort to put that information together. In the meantime, I have also started uploading videos to YouTube and the response has been really good. So if you're already a subscriber, thank you. If you're not, please hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell so you get the notifications. But I've decided instead of charging for that course, I am going to post all of those videos here on YouTube for free. So yes, instead of $99, all those course episodes are gonna be available right here. There is a lot of footage, so instead of putting it in one long video, which would be kind of boring, it is split up into smaller sections and I will start uploading episodes as they are edited and trimmed and finalized. So this is gonna be episode number one and get you started and please subscribe, like I said, and you'll get notified as the following episodes come out. I'll have links to parts, to tools, uh, basically any information that I provide, I'm gonna try and give you the most help that I possibly can so that you can build a bike that's just like the one I built if you want to, or you just have the confidence to go out and build your own. So thanks again for watching. We're gonna get started right into the course from here and I hope you have fun. Thank you so much for signing up for my course on how to build your very own electric bicycle. My name's Kyle and I'm gonna be your instructor for this course. There are two things I wanna make sure are clear before we even get started. One, who is the course for? And two, what exactly are we gonna cover? As far as who the course is for, this is intended for beginners. So if you have never built an electric bicycle before, maybe you've never even ridden one and you're just fascinated and decided you want to jump right in and build one, or if you have an electric bike but aren't very familiar with the maintenance and how to work on it, maybe you want to modify it a little bit, uh, or if you have some experience with basic bicycle maintenance but you're not quite sure where to get started, uh, then this is the ideal place because we're going to start from the frame up, we're not gonna do anything complicated. We're gonna use fairly basic tools and go all the way from the frame to a completed electric fat bike. Now, if a fat bike is not exactly what you're after, one, uh, don't knock it till you try it, and two, uh, most of these principles will apply to other bicycles. So we'll talk about some of the differences and things that you may have to change from what's covered to build the bike that you need. You're also going to need tools, of course. Most of these are gonna be basic bicycle tools. Uh, you may have these in your saddlebag already on your bike. You may have some of them in your garage, or you may have to buy some of these to complete it. Thankfully, tools are something that lasts a long time, and you can build many, many bikes, or just keep maintaining the bike that you build once you're done with it. I'll provide a complete list of all the tools that we use to build this bike, as well as links to where you can buy them. And if I have any affiliate links, I will make sure that's clearly noted. One of the most useful tools is a bike stand. Now this stand is not actually made for electric bikes and it can't handle the weight of a completed electric bike, but for the purposes of this build, it's gonna work just fine. You'll see through the process that I have how I start on the stand and then move the bike around as it gets heavier so that way you don't have to buy a really expensive heavy duty stand to build an electric bike. Now if you want one of course there are plenty available I would recommend checking the weight limits and making sure you buy one that can handle it. So the first step 
is to grab our frame, which we have right here, and clamp it down into our bike stand. Now a bike stand is not required, but it does make the job a lot easier. The first thing that I like to do is mount the seat onto the seat post. Now if you look at this seat, this is often a way that they come. It has this bracket on the bottom, and that's usually not used. So for the type of seat post we're going to use, we're just going to remove these nuts. They're loosely on there from shipping and pull off that bracket and try not to drop everything everywhere. Now that we've got rid of the extra pieces we don't need on the seat, let's talk a little bit about seats. Not every seat is going to be comfortable for everybody. That's a very personal preference. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different comfort level is different shapes, but one thing I see is very common is seats not being adjusted properly. If a seat's too high this way, you're gonna have too much pressure here, it's gonna be uncomfortable. If it's tilted too far forward, you're gonna have too much pressure here and be uncomfortable. So keep in mind that if you are uncomfortable on your seat when you first build a bike or ride a bike, that it may just need to be adjusted and you may not actually need a different seat. Okay, now let's get the seat onto the seat post. First thing you wanna do is keep all of these pieces together. You don't need to pull it all apart. I find that it's easier if you keep them together, but loosen this top nut, that way you have lots of slack in between these two pieces, because that's where the two seat rails are gonna slide in. This is the position that you're gonna go, just like that. So there we have the seat posts loosely put on, and here's where you can see the adjustment. This bottom piece has small splines on it, that way it can rotate forwards and backwards. That's so you can adjust it for comfort. So we're not quite sure where it needs to be at the moment. So initially when building a bike, I wouldn't be too picky about that. I would just pick a spot and then get it snug and you'll have to adjust that once the bike is complete and you take it for a test ride. First tool we're going to use is an Allen wrench. So this is a six millimeter and pretty much every tool on a bicycle is going to be metric. So if you're using Allen wrenches or a hex wrench like this, please make sure that you're using everything metric. Standard tools are typically not used on bicycles. So if they feel close and like they might fit, don't use them or else you might strip a part. So for this one, we're using a six millimeter on the bolts right underneath the seat post and we're just going to tighten it up. And like I said, we don't need to worry about getting it all the way tight and adjusted perfectly because we'll have to adjust the seat a bit for comfort once the bike is complete. Two things you need to know about the seat post. One, not all seat post diameters are the same. In fact, there's quite a few different sizes. So make sure you check your frame. You can either measure the inside diameter of the seat tube, or you can ask the manufacturer of the frame what size seat post it was designed for. And the second thing is the quick release or the seat clamp. Uh, we're gonna use a quick release seat clamp on this bike. Now, this one, you can see, is labeled as 31.8 millimeters, whereas the seat post says 27.2 millimeters. Yet, these are the right parts. How can that be? That's because the seat post is measuring the inner diameter of this tube, whereas the seat clamp is measuring the inner, di inner diameter of the clamp, which is the outside diameter of the frame. So the clamp should pop right on. And then we can insert the seat and tighten it down. Now that I've got the seat and the seat post mounted to the frame, we're going to actually undo this from our bike stand and we're going to change the position here. And there are a couple of reasons for doing this. 
And after building dozens and dozens and dozens of electric bicycles, uh, this is what I found to be the most efficient and the easiest thing to do. So if we take our clamp over here and adjust it so that way the bike is held by the seat post instead of the frame, uh, that does a couple of things. But the main reason is it gets the clamp off the frame because we actually are going to have cables that are running here and cable guides and all sorts of things and having that clamp right there will get in our way later. And you'll also see once it's time to remove the bike from the stand why it's helpful to have the seat on there now. Now we're ready for the next step. Those were the first few steps to building your own electric bike. Please come back for more. I will be posting the next video soon. If you're watching this at some point in the future, I'll try to have a link right here or right there or right there, somewhere close by so it's easy to get to so you know exactly what the next step is. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little bell notification. I hope to have many, many useful videos on electric bikes coming out. And I'll see you next time.